Good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to do something really unique today. I'm actually going to open myself up and answer tax questions, preferably from my clients, okay? Uh, so that it takes away a few of you. Right, Franz? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just want to share a few things with you before I take a few questions. Um, Donald Trump, which you obviously know, is a home to be in there. First thing he does in the morning, he wakes up 4 o'clock every morning. First thing he does is read. And when people say that they don't have time to read, um, I think about a man who's a multi-billionaire. He makes time to read. He either reads a book or he does internet research. Now remember, he's worked with pretty much everyone in this table with this stuff, but he takes time to read. And when I'm talking to my clients, they want to run and do something but they don't want to take the time to research they crap, or the economic situation of the crap, or the fact of what entity they should be set up in. And what I advise my clients is business strategy, um, building your team. Why is your team so important? I go with an acronym called MBA, Marketing, Banker, Accountant. Um, most people don't know their banker's first and last name, or they don't know their loan officer's first and last name. And as a business person, we need to transcend from being an account number to being a human being. So with that said and done, um, if you think it's a personal question, then we'll go privately and I will ask that question one-on-one. Uh, -on -one. But I'm just going to open myself up and start asking some general tax questions. Who's first? Go ahead, Russell. Explain 1120S for me. Oh, 1120 s is subchapter S. It's an S corporation. Um, technically given a uh, nickname Small Business Corp. You can technically have 100 members, 100 shareholders. Um, now if they marry in California community property, they count as one. So technically you can have 200. Um, but one of the things that the IRS is cracking down on, of, and this is what Russell wants me to allude to, is that um, if you're not on payroll, uh, and technically speaking, your dividend or your net income can be subject or recharacterized as W-2. So, for example, if you make $200,000 of income, your expenses is $100,000, your net income or your dividend is $100,000. That can be subject to uh, those nasty acronyms, FICA, Medicare, you know, Fairwood Holding, State Holding, SDI, plus this federal state uh, expenditures as well too. So you are supposed to put yourself on payroll. Nice book, Russell. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but is, is, there, is there a limited or unlimited amount that you can pay yourself as an S corporation? It's your company. There's no um, limitations. So say for example, <clears throat> if I may follow up, say for example, small business, you're just starting out, you know, and you're bankrolling the whole thing yourself, um, technically, you know, you're living off your wife or your husband, um, can I pay myself or yourself a dollar? In that case, that's a little bit different, and that's a good point. Um, I advise my clients to draft up a notice payroll agreement. Mm -hmm. um, some people go to a point where you can get it uh, notarized. I can't go that far, but some people do. Because you don't have to pay yourself until the company reimburses you back your initial capital and money. Um, my advice is, and, and don't quote me on this, um, I look at companies that are probably less than $100,000 a year, you may put yourself on the payroll and maybe for ten dollars to $20,000. The company is not, uh, it doesn't have enough money to, to legitimately pay. But companies that are $125,000, $150,000 plus, you should put yourself on payroll. Because you got to keep this in mind. Big Brother's broke. Big Brother's auditing. I just spent two hours of my morning in an IRS audit, uh, which is finally over with. And it started last August. Did you win? Since this is being filmed, my <laughs> clients have a favorable situation. <laughs> she may look at this, and I will not repeat anything else. Yes, Mr. Davenport. You sure you want to open it up for questions? Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. Uh, can you tell us what are some of the tax advantages of life insurance policy? Tax advantages of life insurance policy. Let's look at it in two parts. Let's say that you are um, a business owner. 
I'm meaning by a corporation. So when I'm saying business owner, I'm looking at corporations. Um, you can have key man insurance. Uh, key man's insurance, that gives the company the ability uh, to insure themselves. But before I go in and answer your question, I want to go explain something first. If someone is married and a partner or the shareholder is not married, I do recommend for them to get an agreement that basically they enter in and the realtors will, will understand this as a married person doing business as a single person. And that's one of the purposes, the reason why I recommend key man's insurance. Because if the equity builds up in 10 years, it's a half a million dollars, that surviving spouse will get two options. They can get part of the insurance, of all of the insurance, or may have the ability to um, uh, turn down the insurance for the opportunity to be a uh, partner or shareholder in the entity as a result of that, if that's agreed upon. Um, another advantage of life insurance, uh, and you realtors will love this because I've seen it happen a few times, um, where primarily doctors and lawyers <coughs> take advantage of this. Um, when you have life surrender value, they borrow the money for let's say three to six months. They go out and uh, purchase real estate. I won't use the common language flipping, we call it a dealer. You go out, uh, you rehab the property, and then you sell it. That gives you enough time to sell it, get your proceeds back, put the money back into your life insurance policy, and it's essentially tax free. Um, and going to another level um, of insurance, um, now you have to have a few comments uh, to, to understand this because this is only, only certain clients can do this. Um, there's something called a self-directed pension plan um, that is it's lethal uh, from the investor side of it. You literally can go from a non-traditional route in retirement. As a result of that, you can purchase a property through your raw file via through your LLC. I won't go into the particulars because we all be asleep. Um, but within that, uh, for clients who, don't, who do not want to go into a non-traditional role of investing or retirement, want to get away from Wall Street, let's say, for example, they buy the property at $100,000. Ten years later, they sell it, half a million dollars. We won't go into the selling expense, but the gain of it is $400,000. That is tax-free because the proceeds go into the raw fiber. And it's perfectly legal. But usually most people are not aware of that. <coughs> there are other uh, structures within the life insurance policy that as a business owner, um, and, and Sean will know more about the product name, but as a business owner, you can actually set up a uh, retirement plan where you, let's say you make an agreement to put in $100,000 a year. And that's the reason why I'm saying a company has to make a substantial dollar amount. Within that $100,000 a year, as the business owner, 90% or 89 point something goes to the business owner. The other 10% goes to the staff people. You, the business owners, determine um, the, 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 the initial time frame. In other words, is it three years or five years when a person gets fully vested? Uh, and if that person doesn't stay for five years in this example, that those monies goes right back to the owner. But here's the key about this. We're coming up on tax season right now. Does the owner have to abide those same laws, those same rules as well? Say again? Does it no, matter? no. Yeah. Well, that, that's the advantage of being the owner as a result of it, because technically it's your money, sir. Um, here's the advantage of this. As long as you file an extension, once again, we're talking about corporations in this example, your tax returns are due September 15th. You can put in $100,000 September 12th, in this case, the tax year 2012, and it's a tax write-off for tax year 2011. So there are creative ways of taking advantage of this as a result of this. Yes, sir. Are you talking about a self-directed IRA? Say again? You're talking about like a self-directed IRA? No, I can't remember the name of it. It's a long name. Sean, do you know the official name of it? Which one? Of what I was just talking about. I can't remember. There's, there's a couple. There's a couple. That's okay. Let me get, because the reason why I'm saying we're meeting Sit up down with Jim. Sit afterward. No. specialize. <laughs> yes, Fred. Um, when you were referring to the self-directed IRA, not the self-directed IRA, but the question related to uh, what realtors might do for 
say, for example, you don't want to do the traditional IRA or mm -hmm. and you say you sell your house, you take the gross the profits and you drop them into your IRA. As, and that, and you say that that is tax, essentially tax free. Because it's a raw fund. Right. Yes. Now, because it's in the raw, I'll be taxed later on that. Is that correct? Yes. It's just, it's just it's tax free for the moment. Deferred tax. Right. But here's the old saying Do you want to be taxed? Uh, on the seed, so you won't be taxed on the crop. You'd rather be taxed on the seed. But see, here's the thing. In a, in a, excuse me, in a wall fire, you're paying taxes now because it's after tax money. Right? So when you get to retirement age, that money is tax free. That's the advantage of a, of a wall fire. Okay? Little, you got a question? Is, well, I, I remember every, coming every January, the news reporters come out with all these new laws and tax things. Is there anything new that the majority of a small business people coming January 1st, that's going to probably affect our businesses? In, in a whole, yeah. let me, and this is a personal preference. When I look at all the new tax regulations, that's really hype uh, <clears throat> to get you to come and talk to someone so they can kind of milk you out a few extra dollars. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that's, my, that's my personal today? opinion about that. The reason why I'm saying this, um, my clientele who are truly affected by the tax laws or my clientele who makes several million dollars a year. Um, and with Congress being, the uh, United States being broke, one of the things that we don't know is uh, what are the potential new laws that are coming out there. One law, I mean, this is over 10 years, there's been a rumor, it may not be a rumor anymore now, that if you own an S corporation, your net income or your dividend may be subject to self-employment taxes. So as a result of that, we're going to, for my clientele, obviously, the majority of them are not going to be S corporations anymore. So we're already taking strategies to find out should there be a limited partnership or possibly a C corporation uh, as a result of this. Um, and most people want to know the difference between an S corp and a C corp. Um, a S corp, uh, for most of the clients, if your net income is roughly less than $100,000 a year, I recommend for you to get an S Corp. But for my C Corp clients, their taxable income is greater than $200,000, $300,000 a year. So from a tax side of it, it's cheaper to be a C Corp than it is to be an S Corp. Because if you have $300,000 that goes into your personal income tax, passes through, um, that's 35% taxes that you're paying. So you look at 300,000, that's 35,000, 35,000, 35,000. That's $105,000 you just gave away. And it's cheaper in a C corporation. Yes, Kathy? Um, question about the difference between um, the tax implications between a short sale and a foreclosure. Wow. Someone okay, that's a good question. Um, and here's the sad thing about it there's really um, as an individual, businesses of uh, uh, Western are a little bit different. They fall into different tax that, that, uh, guidelines. As an individual, um, there's really no difference between the two from a tax side of it. Now, when I'm saying that, as, as long as you stay in your home for like two years and you met those rules, um, you can actually, if you're an uh, individual, you have a $250,000 exclusion. If you marry, you have a half a million dollar exclusion. Um, so you actually can walk away uh, without having to pay any capital gains tax as a result of this. Um, and then if you buy a house within the next two years, um, and it can't, okay, okay, okay. Right. Then, it, but the main thing that affects that from that side of it, and this falls more in the Kennedy's area, is really the credit. But uh, short term, they're essentially the same. The long term, obviously, the foreclosure hurt you worse than the short sale. Yes, ma'am. What about the relief of debt? Say again. The relief of debt. <laughs> relief of debt. Yes, because of the short sale. Um, now, the relief of debt that depends upon whether or not they refinance. So, if they refinance, and this is what they mean by uh, relief of debt. Uh, we, we um, I'm being taped. Uh, I call it. <laughs> it's, we call it boot. We have a nickname that I won't say. Put a Y next to it. That's the <laughs> um, essentially, when you have, um, um, if a person has refinanced, let's put an example, they bought a house for $100,000. Um, let's say half a million. It's now worth 
um, three hundred thousand, but they refinanced and took one hundred thousand dollars out. That one hundred thousand dollars is is deemed to be boot or a gain or a realized gain uh, in that transaction. That is subject to capital gains tax. So people say I'm taking my money out. No, because it's liability relief. Mm -hmm. Yes, Ron. Yes, yes, they, well, they will. They, 1099 they will 1099, but you get 1099. There's three types of 1099s dealing with the short sale. There's a 1099A uh, for abandonment. There's a, then there could be a 1099S for a sale. Then there could be a 1099C for cancellation of debt. So, there's, so it all depends upon which type of 1099 exactly. is how that falls in there. Right. Before, before, you, before you go to Franz, I just want to elaborate on that a little uh, in regards to the short sale actually being reported on your credit profile is still an eyesore. It's still a negative derogatory item that has been placed on your credit profile, mm -hmm. even if they do forgive the debt. Mm -hmm. Short sales are short sales. Is the tax rate the same on all three of those? Um, from my side of it, yes, they are. But the treatment of them are a little bit different on the tax returns. But as far as you, the end user, you won't see a difference of it. So okay, another example of a cancellation of debt is with credit cards. You owe twenty thousand, you sell for ten. Right. You have to pay a tax on ten thousand dollars. Yes, sir. Sorry, Richard. It's been it's been bugging me. Uh, you're talking about a sapphire, right? A self-employed pension. The one you can remember. Right. The one that you can remember. No. No. Uh, yeah, like it, it has, it has uh, a matter of fact, I'll text him to see if I can get a response from him. Okay. Yes, Richard. Is it the Keogh plan? No. Okay. No. Um, <laughs> 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 this, 